Hello and welcome to this next tutorial in making a scratch platforming game. So this is where I left you last tutorial. You've got your first platform, you've got some spikes. So the next thing to do is make a new level. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find a way to avoid these spikes and get onto the next screen which is going to trigger when we get to the far edge of the screen. So nice easy way to do that. I am going to duplicate this block here and then pop it over here so I've got something to jump onto so that I can then move on to the next level. So that's the first step, just simply right click, duplicate and we've got a second platform in. So now when I start the game I can now safely get over to the other side. Now one thing you'll notice here is that my character is appearing behind the actual sprite which is not what I want. So to fix that I can do, um, do a quite a clever trick so I can actually send this back one level. So if we have a quick look for that, we can sort that out. So here we go. We can go to change that to back layer and pop it in here. So now when we click start and we have a little run around, there we go. So it looks more realistic that he's actually standing on the platform rather than appearing behind it. So now we've got that in place, we need to trigger the next screen because we want to be able to run off this screen and for the game to continue going. So as with most things, we're going to start a new block. We're going to click back on our sprites and we're going to start building it. So we want, as always, when green flag clicked, let's pop it up there. And of course, we want a forever loop. So now we want an if and drop that inside of the forever loop and we're going to want to find a green operator one. So what we're going to want is a greater than symbol. So this is the greater than, this is the less than. So if we drop that in there, and what we want to be checking is the X position of our sprite, because X is along the corridor and Y is up and down. So we need to check if his X position is greater than the edge of the screen. So we can do that quite simply and go and find under motion his X position, which is right here towards the bottom. So we can go if the X position of our player character is greater than, now the far edge of the screen is 240. So I want him to move off the screen just before he disappears. So I'm going to put in there 238 so he'll trigger the next screen just before he disappears off the edge. Now the next thing, we want it to make him appear like he's running into a new screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to start him back on this side of the screen again. So to do that we can simply use a go to command. So if we drop that in there and this time this side of the screen is minus 240. So we want to start him right back at the edge of the screen. So we're going to go minus 240 and height. We probably want to start him on a similar level to he is now. So you can see at the moment he's on minus 48, so we'll keep him on that level. So at the moment what will happen if we run across, jump, <laughs> there you go, we just come back off the other edge of the screen, which, you know, to be fair is pretty cool, but we want new obstacles to come into play. So first thing we're going to have to do is hide all of the objects on this level. So we're going to use a broadcast just like we did in the um, previous tutorial. So we're going to create a new broadcast now. So we're going to get him to go there and we're going to broadcast next level. Now you'll just have to create a new message and type in next level in there. Um, I've already done it, so I've got it available to use, but you'll have to type yours in. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that when the next level broadcast is received, we hide all of the assets from this page, all of the sprites. Because at the end of the day, you know, we want these to disappear and we want new sprites to appear, platforms in the places of our choosing. So you can see here I've already got it. When I receive next level hide, here I've already got it. When I receive next level hide, and then make sure we've got it there as well. So now if we press play, what should happen is I come off the edge, boom, everything's disappeared. So now we've got a completely blank template to start again. So we can make a new level with different platforms in place. So I'm going to duplicate this one again. So now I've got another one. At the moment you can see it's right up there. And for this platform, I'm going to say when I receive next level, I'm going to take that off 
and I'm going to put in show. So now when I go back to the beginning, it will show. So stop the game, start again. And one more thing we need is when green flag clicked, I'm going to pop that one down there because we want it to go to the back layer. So when green flag clicked, we want it to hide. When I receive game over, obviously we want it to hide as well because we don't want it in front of the game over screen. And now when I receive next level, show and go to the back layer and that will make our character appear in front of it. So let's see how that works. There we go. There it is. So next thing we want to do is bring this down so that our character can actually run onto it. So let's see how that is. There we go. It's a little bit too low. So I'll just bring that up a tad. Watch him drop off. And there we have it. Perfect. We have the beginning of our new le new level. So next tutorial, I'll take you through adding a few more things to this. Um, we'll make it an interesting level. I'll show you how to do a moving platform to jump onto. And finally, I'll show you how to have like a portal or a key or something so you can finish off. And that will be our next tutorial. Well, thanks for watching. You now know how to make two levels in your game. See you next time.